Hey everyone, this is Callie. Thanks so much for being here with me today. We're gonna to be creating a Mother's Day card with lots of florals, with stenciling and some ink blending. So let's get started here. I've got the Spring Blossom stencils and it comes in a set of three and we're gonna be ink blending each layer. Super simple actually, I'm not gonna be doing very much shading. There are two layers for the flowers, so that will be straightforward. And then for the foliage, there's just one layer, so that's where I'm gonna be doing some shading. I'm using my Waffle Flower stencil mat here to help me hold my stencil and cardstock in place. I'm just gonna push it towards the corner there so nothing moves, and that'll help me ink blend without too much trouble. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with some jalapeno ink here. This is the lighter green that I'm gonna choose, and we're gonna apply a single layer all across this stencil and we're gonna do an even application of this ink so that we can get coverage of all of the little specks and foliage that's on the stencil. I used a smaller brush, but since we're doing an even application, you really could use a larger brush. I just grabbed one and am going with it. So I'm gonna fully cover the entire panel here. And then when we're done with the jalapeno ink, I'm gonna bring in the clover ink. This is a new color from Lawn Fawn. It is a darker, truer green, more like a hunter's green. So I'm just gonna apply that darker ink um, into the nooks and crannies and at the bottom of the foliage stems. So that way we could see some contrast between the light and the dark. And once we lift away this stencil, you'll see more of that shading and it really increases the contrast for the stems and it really, I think, adds a lot to the ink blending. Now that we're done with this foliage layer, I'm gonna go ahead and begin with the flowers. I'm gonna be working on the larger blooms so that I can blend with a lighter pink first and then I'll bring in that second layer with the more details of the flowers with a darker pink. I'm using Peachy Keen for my first layer here and just like with the foliage, I'm applying an even amount of ink all over the stencil and just making sure I get full coverage of all those little tiny dots and speckles on this layer. My second layer is going to use guava ink. It's a little bit darker and I'm going to use a little bit of a heavier hand to get that color a little bit more saturated on my card panel to show more depth on these flowers. So I'm gonna do the same thing, an even layer. I don't need to do much ink blending because these are layered and they are the perfect amount of contrast between the flower and the details of the flower. And now we are done with the background. As you can see, because I butt up that paper into that stencil mat, we have a little border here on our ink blended panel. So I'm just gonna be chopping that off. It's a perfect quarter inch. So I'm just gonna cut off some at the sides and bottom, and now we can form our infinity shaker. So for infinity shakers, I like to use stamp and die packaging. So I've got one that's the perfect size here. You just want it about a half inch bigger all the way around. And I'm gonna trim down this and cut off all of the sides and edges. And then you'll end up with two sheets of cellophane. And I'm just gonna peel off that little sticky portion that I don't need on this one. And then we can set that aside for a, another project in the future. To make our infinity shaker, we just need to wrap this cellophane around our background panel. So I've got my background panel on the cellophane. We're gonna create an envelope all the way around. So in order to do that and make things easier without a lot of cellophane overlap, we're just gonna cut the corners at a perfect 45 degree angle at the corner. So I'm just chopping it straight off at the corners, making sure that it's all aligned and we don't have any excess hang off or cutting too much off. And as you can see, that just looks like a perfect frame for our card panel. And we're gonna use double-sided adhesive to fold up those little flaps to create our envelope for our shaker. We're gonna work on creating an envelope that's open first so we can fill it up with sequins later. So I'm working on the bottom first. I'm applying a quarter inch double-sided tape and I'm gonna use my fingers to lift that flap up without moving any of the other parts and that'll seal that flap in place. So I'm just gonna rotate my panel here and work on the sides. So I'm applying, again, some double-sided tape, lifting that cellophane and adhering it in place, and then I'll do the same thing to the other side, and that will create a nice and snug envelope. 
you don't want it to be too tight, but you also don't want it to be um, too loose either for the shaker components to move around. It's, it's completely up to you. I like it a little snug. So I'm leaving the top open for now and we're gonna add some sequins. I've got some hollow hearts here from Lucy's Cards as well as some Trinity Stamped Soapy Bubbles. I don't know how much I'm adding in, I'm just eyeballing it. Maybe a quarter to a half teaspoon of each and then shake it up and see how you like it. If you wanna add more, you can add more. And if you've added too much, you can take some out. But I think this is about what I like. So when you're happy with it, you can go ahead and seal the top of your infinity shaker. Super fun and super easy and it creates a low bulk shaker card. And if you wanted to add jewels, just account for that and add more spacing for your cellophane. Okay, so once we're done with our background shaker panel, we can go ahead and adhere it to a card base. You can do this at the very end. I'm just gonna go ahead and do it now. I'm applying some more double-sided adhesive to attach to my card base, and this will make sure that it stays nice and sturdy and adhered down at all four of the corners, and nothing is lifting up. Okay, so now that our shaker infinity panel is ready, we can go ahead and embellish this card with our sentiment and all the flowers that I'm gonna be using to adorn on top of the shaker panel. So I've die cut the giant Happy Mother's Day die three times, twice in white for stacking, and then once with guava cardstock. And I'm gonna use some guava ink, the same ink that I used on the flowers of the stencil, and I'm just gonna ink blend all the way around the outer edges of the giant Happy Mother's die to give it more color and interest. And then I'll use some liquid glue to adhere all of the layers together for dimension. Now to adhere this to our cellophane, we wanna make sure that we use something that's super strong and sturdy. So I'm using some 1 8 inch double-sided tape here. It fits perfectly on the back of those letters. So I've applied some of that. And if I hadn't stacked the two white layers underneath, I could have also used foam adhesive and that would have been a good alternative as well but I definitely don't recommend liquid adhesive to adhere things to cellophane. It just doesn't dry quick enough and your die cut elements are gonna be moving around and that might cause a mess. Next, I have all of these flowers and foliage from the Magic Iris Floral Wreath. There are some loose dies from the die set that I love, so I went ahead and die cut some in ballet slippers, guava, cilantro, and sunflower cardstock. And now I'm just adding some color, same as I did with the stencils. I'm just applying some of the colors in the lower half of all of the flowers and foliage to give them a little bit more dimension. And you certainly don't have to complicate your card and do this step here that I'm doing. I'm adding a bit of foam adhesive to the center of all of the flowers to add those yellow flower centers. It just creates a little bit more dimension, not completely necessary, and you can totally skip that part if you want to. I'm gonna pull in my card now and we're gonna use some strong double-sided adhesive tape again. This is the 1 8 inch. Whatever fits on the back without showing too much, and if it does overlap a little bit, you can just kind of move it with your fingers to get it off the openings of the spaces. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, I am applying the flowers in areas all around my sentiment here to create little floral sprays around my sentiment. And I do that with the large flowers first and then I'm gonna fill in with, with foliage, tucking them underneath the larger flowers and then finishing by adding the smaller tulip flowers all around. And they're kind of just floating around the foliage since they don't have stems. And that's a wrap for today's card. I hope you enjoyed this Infinity Shaker card. Be sure to give it a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Everything I use will be linked below for your convenience. I'll be linking two more videos here for you to watch if you're interested in seeing more. Otherwise, I hope you all have a great day. Bye everyone.